What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, H-A-W-G Sports.com. Razorbacks coming off of a 42-27 win over the Ole Miss Rebels. We'll recap that game a little bit, look ahead to Friday's game against the Missouri Tigers in Columbia, Missouri, and we're going to talk to the whole crew today. We're going to have Danny West, Curtis Wilkerson, and Andrew Ellis all join us to talk about different aspects of Razorback athletics. Of course, the basketball teams in Maui, we'll touch on that a little bit, too. All that more on today's episode of Hogsports Live. Before we get started, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on YouTube. Of course, follow us on Facebook Live where we always stream live. Throw us a thumbs up or a like or whatever on both of those channels and subscribe to both of those channels. Hit the notifications bell so you're alerted anytime we upload new videos on YouTube and also available on Apple Podcasts. Throw us a five-star review there. Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. And Hog Sports is just $1 right now for your first month at HAWGsports.com. I want to say this, though. I want to say this. I can't tell you what's going on, but everybody knows that that Cyber Monday and Black Friday coming up first, obviously, is coming up. We're going to jump the gun a little bit, I can tell you that, but I can't tell you what's happening tomorrow. I just, I just want to impress upon you to go to Hog Sports tomorrow. You'll be really glad you did. <laughs> Go to Tuesday for those listening later, but go to on Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022, go to Hog Sports. You'll be happy that you went and checked us out over there. That's all I'm going to say right now. All right. Where do we want to start out? Three Razorbacks earned SEC Player of the Week honors. That's always good to see. Rocket Sanders, Drew Sanders, and Ricky Stromberg. Rocket Sanders was SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Drew Sanders, SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Ricky Stromberg, SEC Co-Offensive Lineman of the Week. So, just to recap what those guys did, very strong games, obviously. Rocket had 232 rushing yards. That puts him at 1,379, which is just behind Madre. Hell of a year for Rocket Sanders. KJ, or excuse me, not KJ, um, Drew Sanders. Drew Sanders had, let's see, where are his numbers? Where's your numbers, Drew? Oh, there it is. So Drew Sanders had twelve TF, or excuse me, twelve tackles. Dad Gummit, where is his numbers? I can't find his numbers. All right, I can tell you what he what he's done overall in the year though, which is pretty unique. So he has twelve tackles for loss, eight sacks, three forced fumbles, a fumble recovery, which he had, and an interception, which he also had in the last game. So he joins Khalil Mack who was a first-round draft pick, as the only FBS player since 2000 to have 95 tackles in a season, 12 tackles for loss, eight sacks, three forced fumbles, fumble recovery, and interception. Pretty impressive. And all Ricky Stromberg did was make his 43rd start. (laughs) Congrats to those guys. So, just for the rushing totals all-time at Arkansas, Darren McFadden's one with 1,830 yards. Darren McFadden's two with 1,647 yards. Alex Collins is three with 1,577 yards. And Madre Hill is fourth with 1,387 yards. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to assume that Rocket Sanders is at least going to be fourth. Here's a little disappointing news. James Joyner entered the transfer portal. And you may be saying, well, Trey, I thought the transfer portal op- opens on December 5th. It does. Trey, I thought there was a four-day dead period so coaches have an opportunity to talk to all the players before they enter the portal, find out what their deal is. That's true, too. I don't know what I don't know what the benefit is of entering the transfer portal with one regular season game left. Why, why would you – I don't understand why you did that. And I also don't understand why Sam Pittman – And Jimmy Smith both had to find out on Twitter because there was no meeting. You didn't tell them. I just don't understand. I just I don't get that. I think James Joyner has done himself a disservice here. Not that I mean he's the bottom of the depth chart. I get it. You know he's a freshman. Um, The guy's got some talent, but he's 
on the bottom of the depth chart. I understand transferring, but why would you transfer right at the end of the season and not even tell your coaches that you're going to do it? I just don't get that. And I think you do yourself a disservice because everybody that does it the right way, that waits to the end of the season, that talks to the coach, says, hey, coach, I want to enter transfer portal. Usually it's because of playing time or something like that. Or the coach says, hey, you're just not going to play here. You know, we got to – they're going to find all the. They're going to help all those players find a spot. I don't know if they'll do that in this case. I just that's not how you do things. I'm sorry. I wish James Joyner all the luck in the world, but this is not how you. This is not how you leave a team. There's no. There's no benefit to leaving a team a week early. You can't take visits. You can't even enter the portal. Speaking of the portal, it's going to be wild. We're going to talk to Andrew Ellis a little bit more about. Some of his thoughts. He's kind of the portal guy around here. Arkansas basketball, we're not going to touch on this too much. We want this to be a little bit evergreenish. But uh, for those listening, Monday, November 21st, 4 o'clock against Louisville. Tuesday, November 26th, they'll play either Texas Tech or Creighton. That'll be at 7 if they win and one thirty if they lose to Louisville. And then to be announced on Wednesday, November 23rd. Very exciting time. The best way to watch, I think, is usually using, you know, streaming the game, uh, whether it's YouTube TV or, um, you know, watching on the ESPN app or or something like that. But if you're going to do that, the best service to have would be Ozarks Go. For those of you who aren't familiar with Ozarks Go, they're a newer company. that You've heard of Ozarks Electric before. If you're north of the tunnel in northwest Arkansas, if you're in eastern Oklahoma, you know, you've heard of Ozarks Electric. Ozarks Go is the internet service they provide. I've been using these guys for about almost 18 months now. I just, I'd heard some good things about them. I decided to give them a shot. I tried three other people before, three other companies before over the years, and I haven't been satisfied with any of them whether it's rate hikes or internet dropping out or using my ESPN app and it's just all blurry for some reason, even though I'm pow- paying for 1,000 megabits per second up and down. Well, I've never had that problem with Ozarks Go. I've never had to unplug and replug my service. It just works. Go to ozarksgo.net slash hog, H-A-W-G, ozarksgo.net slash hog, and check availability. See if they're available in your area. Again, think Northwest Arkansas, east, Northeast Oklahoma. Uh, you, there's a graphic up there you can click on to see if they're available. And you can also, they're ever expanding. You know, I remember when I was like, I wonder if they're going to come to my area. And eventually they obviously did and, and picked them up. So um, you can also reach them at 479 684 4900. If you need to talk to somebody there, you're going to talk to somebody local also. So my experience has been fantastic with those arcs go. I'm really proud to have them on as a, as a sponsor in the show because I don't take sponsors that I don't believe in. Go check them out. 1,000 megabits up and down or 100 megabits up and down. Both those are plenty fast. It depends on what you need. I like 1,000 personally. All right, just looking back at the game, um, Arkansas won 42-27. It was 42-6 to at one point in this game, 42-6. to There's a large contingency of people – that are disappointed with the way they won. So first we're disappointed that they're losing, and now they win. We're disappointed that, that with the way they won. And, you know, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't a pretty end of the game. Uh, 42-27, they were outscored 21-0 in the fourth quarter, 216 yards to 11. That's not pretty. That's not the way you want to finish off a game. I could – I'd be willing to wager pretty, pretty heavily that had this game been closer – you're not going to see that many yards by Ole Miss. I think a few things played a factor. First of all, it's 42 to six. The game's over, right? It's 42 to six. Second play of the third quarter. You know, Ole Miss is like, we got to get things together and you know, pop off a 68-yard run against them. The game's over. Arkansas defensively, you know, you got to imagine like, okay, we can't have them throwing over the top of us and getting a quick score. And then Ole Miss is like, well, we're just going to run the ball. We're going to pile up a bunch of rushing yards. We can't win the game like that. We're going to pile up a bunch of rushing yards. So that's basically what happened. So Arkansas is playing against, you know, the pass, thinking pass, uh, you know, for a large portion of that. And Ole Miss is just uh, just running the ball and racking up rushing yards. Uh, the offense obviously went into, you know, trying to mil- milk down the clock all the way to 40 seconds and just didn't have a lot of success. I think, to me, the offense was just as disappointing in the fourth quarter as the defense just because they didn't – you know, we've seen the offense just 
plow over people and put a game away. And they it just wasn't happening for them in this one. Um, you know, obviously Ole Miss is playing the run super heavily, not going to let you run. Ole Miss has got a good defense. I mean, there's a middle of the pack, upper middle of the pack defense. Uh, and the offense is extremely explosive, obviously. So, um, and I think those are some of the things that played into the game, not finishing exactly like we all wanted. And I think also looking up and seeing 42 to 6. I mean, look at the look at the crowd. The crowd emptied out when it was – I mean, at halftime, it really started emptying out because the game was over. But that first half was a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, it really was. I know a lot of Ole Miss people think that, like, there's some penalties unjustified. I went back and looked. All the penalties are very justified. All of them were very justified, I thought. So, I don't think that's a, an argument at all. I thought there were some things, you know, that really impacted uh, the outcome of the play also. So, I don't think that's – I mean, you don't go down 42-6 to six just because the refs kind of screwed you over. <laughs> but um, it was nice to see Arkansas put everything together finally like they did, um, you know, defensively. And, again, not the fourth quarter. They obviously did not finish the game like you wanted them to. But, uh, you know, having K.J. back, it is amazing to me – you know, how many people are down? I saw people, like, predicting on Ole Miss side of things, like predicting that Arkansas was going to score 14 points or something. I'm like, you realize they have K.J. Jefferson, right? He's coming back for this when He's healthy again. But uh, it's, it makes this a huge difference. Like, you know, people were kind of down on Rocket Sanders. He's not running well. The line's not blocking well. Putting a guy like K.J. Jefferson in there who's the threat to pass or run opens up everything. It makes you play honest on defense. And we saw the result of it, finally putting it all together. So – a well-played game overall, not quite finished the way you want to. Dude who stole uh, the helmet, by the way, just return the helmet. Like, if they don't catch you, I mean, you're on video and stuff. It just, I, don't, I just did not think that was a very classy thing to do. And I understand everybody's drinking. It's a party. You're having fun. I, don't, I just don't agree with taking the helmet like that. If it were, my suggestion would be to take the helmet and go put it on the steps at the stadium and drive off or something if you don't want to get caught. Return the helmet. For those of you who don't know, somebody this guy stole one. Uh, I, I think it was Malik Heath's maybe. It was number eight for Ole Miss. Stole his helmet and ran out of the stadium with it. And, and Heath's like trying to chase him down. Kind of a weird deal. Arkansas plays Missouri coming up here. Arkansas has never won in Como. Never won. 0-5. This is a program that Arkansas looks down on. I mean, you're better than them. Historically, every measure – Arkansas has a better football program than Missouri does, but they're nine and four over Arkansas. Look out! I mean, I'm not saying like do this, but like as far as like punchable faces go, wouldn't you just want to? <laughs> Man, he's got a punchable face. The definition, like right beside that in the Urban Dictionary, should probably be a face of Eli Drinkwitz. Just kind of a try-hard, a little nerdy, doesn't look like a football coach. Missouri's – what are they? So, they need this game to get a bowl eligible. Are they 5-6 and six right now? I think they've got it wrong in the game notes here. 2-5 and five in the SEC. Game's at 2.30 Friday. It's a great week for Arkansas sports. You've got basketball on Monday – Basketball on Tuesday, basketball on Wednesday, Thursday's Thanksgiving. You can watch the Egg Bowl. That's going to be entertaining also. Is it going to be Lane Kiffin's last game at Ole Miss? And then you got Arkansas football on Friday. And then Saturday you got everything. You're not even thinking about Arkansas football. And we'll see if Arkansas comes out with a win. When did I say I'm getting to Danny? Maybe running late on you, Danny. I am. Okay, just a couple more things I wanted to get to here. So, yeah, Missouri's 5-6. and six. They just didn't have it updated right in the game notes. So, Missouri's 5-6. and six. They need this game to get bowl eligible. They had their senior bowl last week for some reason, their senior game last week, senior day. But this is, I mean, as charged up as Arkansas was, you would think their players are going to be equally charged up as Arkansas was last week to get bowl eligible in this one. So, Missouri has won – until this last year when Arkansas won 34-17 in Fayetteville, Missouri had won five straight, seven of eight, and Arkansas has never beaten them there. This is a program that Arkansas looks down their noses at. 
the battle line rivalry, tongue in cheek, the borderline rival. Kind of a forced rivalry, but never won in Como, so this would be a year to do it. I can't count how many times I felt like Arkansas had a way better team. I mean, obviously not during the Morris era, but how many times I felt like Arkansas had a way better team than Missouri and just just laid an egg. And if you don't think Missouri can beat Arkansas, if those numbers don't show you, I mean, they played Georgia really hard. They're actually playing pretty well lately. They're not playing that bad. All right, I got to get to Danny. It's going to throw my timing off. We got practice early and everything today, so I got to get to that. Where are you, Danny? All right. For those of you who don't follow Danny, what are you doing? You've got to follow Danny West, at Danny West 24-7. I mean, if you're a diehard Razorback fan and you're not following Danny West, then I don't know what to tell you. Danny has been with us for I don't even know how long. Danny, how long have you been trick? with us? How long have you been with us at Hawk Sports? As a, you were you are a member for years and then – uh, brought you on yeah. to work at the site. But how long has that been? I mean, 12 years or something? Well, Is it more? It's yeah, I think more. I joined the site October of 2003, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. It, it may have been 04, but uh, I'll have to look on that. Now, I started a basically a two-year internship with you, mm-hmm. I want to say 2009, and then went full-time in the summer of 2011, I believe, Trey. So. Okay. I'm getting old, man. My memory ain't what it used to be, but I think that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, th- your mid-early 30s. <laughs> <laughs> 37. 37. Are you 37? That's yeah, crazy. Because I, I met yeah. you when you were like 18 or 19. Yeah, I was 19 years old. I'll never forget it. Walked yeah. up on you. You had those sandals on. Yeah. I said, man, this guy's got to be from Sheridan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Just joking to all my Sheridan buddies out there. Um. So, Danny, uh, there was a good number of recruits in town this past weekend. Um, mm-hmm. What are some of the, the reviews from the from the game? Yeah, I think it was a good one, man. They needed that, you know. Uh, they had some pretty good crowds on hand for Alabama, of course, and LSU, but you lost those games. Now, I don't know if, how much you keep up with recruiting, but it's better to win yeah. the games <laughs> that the kids attend. Yeah. And, uh, and and they got it done. You know, it was a, it was a good group. Michael Hawkins – uh, Devon Mitchell talked to both of those guys over the weekend and, and, you know, nothing earth shattering there, but I think they're in a really good spot with both of those guys out of Allen, Texas. Michael, of course, is a four-star quarterback for the 24 class that's been here a handful of times now. I think he visited once in June and another time in July. He's been here at least a couple of times so far this season. Same deal with Devon. You know, he's probably going to be the number one tight end country, uh, tight end in the country for mm-hmm. 2025. You know, we'll see. Is there a uh, there's been a little bit of talk that maybe he could move up, reclassify to 24. So I don't know that. I don't know his situation well enough to be honest with you. So we'll see on that. But uh, shoot, I think he could be number one in 24 if he reclassified. He's a stud, and uh, both those guys were priority uh, visitors coming in this weekend Devon seemed to really enjoy himself before the game based on everything I follow him on you know Snapchat and Instagram all these things but that photo shoot man he seemed to really enjoy that photo Mm -hmm. shoot and that's one aspect of a visit that we don't often talk about but man it makes it palpable for a lot of these kids it's one thing to get you know a, a camp invite or a message from a coach and this and that but man you step on campus put on the uniform it's real to you. So it was good to see, you know, from Arkansas standpoint, probably good to see that he really had a good visit again. And um, Devin Carter, another 2026 kid. And we're talking about a freshman in high school out yeah. of Cedar Grove. <laughs> Obviously uh, a lot of connections there with, with coach Jimmy and, and Rashad doing so well as a true freshman, but Devin is a 5'11", 160 uh, receiver, free safety, could probably play either way. Arkansas was the first one to offer back in July. And then here comes Georgia and Florida State and Ole Miss and the like, you know. So could be a lot of competition, probably a top 100 guy in his own right for 2026. Now, it's, it's getting way out there. But, uh, yeah, they did have some big-time guys on campus. I think it went well. And, you know, you look ahead to this week, of course, they're on the road at Missouri. But Missouri's going to have one Ryan Wingo on hand there. So, you know, Arkansas and Missouri both battling for that guy. And boy, what, what, 
wouldn't it be something for mm-hmm. Arkansas to go up there and break their heart, keep them out of a bowl, and to do it in front of Ronnie's little brother, you know? So something to keep an eye on there. They're they're probably looking forward to that opportunity. Is it weird for you, Danny, covering kids in the class of 2026 and Shoot, also – Well, think about the gap here, man, because you've got – now the, it's the transfer portal age, so you've got guys who are like seniors, probably from what the class of, you know, 2019, 2018 and stuff. Yeah. You know, and then you're also talking about 2026. Like, there's maybe a, almost an eight a year gap. Span yeah. There. yeah. Yeah. Quite yeah, a gap. It's tough. It's tough. You know, you, especially on the phone with them, you, know, you kind of have to remind yourself of who you're dealing with a lot of times, mm-hmm. especially some of these transfer guys, 21, 22 years old. Well, he's not a kid and you get on these, these shows and I say, Oh, he's a good kid. And then I have to remind myself, man, that guy can buy a beer if he wants to, you mm-hmm. know, he's a grown man. And then on the other hand, you talk to a 2026 20, and you're like, that gun, man, this dude's really, really young <laughs> to have Georgia and Alabama and all these offers. So those 22 yeah, year olds are still spectrum. kids to me. They're still, they're still making mistakes for the first time. Hey, no doubt, but I am too at 37. <laughs> You're making the same mistake over and over same again Same mistake this over and over. Yeah. yeah. All right, Danny. Uh, we're just kind of doing some quick hitters today, but uh, you got anything else you want to add? No, that's it, man. I'll get out of their way. You want to complain to about my... the way the team won? <laughs> no, I'm good on that. I've got no complaints this week. It, wasn't it a good one? I mean, you can yeah. kind of feel it coming last week. And, yeah. And uh, – and it worked out for them. But, no, let me get out of their way. I know you're probably up against it a little bit today. But yeah, we got early to practice today. So, Okay. Yep. All right, Danny. Appreciate right, you, buddy. brother. We'll see you. All right, everybody. That's Danny West. Follow him at Danny West 24-7 on Twitter. And who are we going to next? Is it Curtis next? We are going to – yep, Curtis Wilkerson. And we're a couple minutes late on Curtis. Well, by the way, we're not doing a uh, Thursday show. This is the – this is the last Monday show, I guess it'll be, you know, around two o'clock ish. So um, after this, I guess we'll move it back up. It, it just depends on Sam Pittman's press conference times and stuff. But uh, that, we usually do this at eleven o'clock in the off season, and we'll get closer to doing it then as well. See what, <clears throat> excuse me, see what Curtis has to say. Hey, Trey. Curtis, I got a cough. Hold on. <coughs> Something went down wrong. How you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. I had a I had a coffin fit myself right before you called, so I yeah. get it. I know how it goes. Yeah. Well, um, Curtis, uh, just first of all, your impressions here on uh, on Arkansas's win over Ole Miss and just looking ahead to Missouri. Yeah, I mean, I was honestly really impressed. You know, I I think coming into the game, yeah, I I did. I I picked Arkansas to lose this one, and my thought process behind it was. Well, it's been 10 games, and we've been kind of waiting for them to put together a, a complete game, play complimentary football, all three phases, you know, all those cliche things. And I just didn't know if they were going to do that in the 11th game of the season, um, and they did. You know, I, I thought they looked really good. Uh, this team is just different with K.J. Jefferson on the field. I, I think that showed. Uh, got the running game going. The offensive line looked good. So I, I thought it was a great performance offensively. Uh, you know, the defense, it's a lot of yards to give up. Uh, obviously, that was a lot of that was after things were decided there. But, man, they just continue to make plays. It's been quite a turnaround, you know, where, for Perry Odom's crew, considering where they were, uh, you know, a few weeks ago. So, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a, a great game for Arkansas to kind of right the ship and, and get things back on course. And, you know, now you're trying to just improve your bowl standing. They've got a good opportunity to go over to Missouri and – win in a place that they haven't won at since they've been in the SEC or, or ever. I don't know how far you have to go back to find the win down there. So uh, going to be interesting to see if they can match that energy uh, that they had in this one. Obviously, they were fighting for bowl eligibility. The seniors in their last game at home, Missouri is doing a lot of those things this week. And mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see if Arkansas can kind of recreate the magic there. But, uh, yeah, really impressive performance. Makes you feel pretty good about where they're at. Curtis Wilkerson joining in, joining us. Follow us at follow him at Kurt Wilkerson underscore Curtis. I've been I accidentally tweeted on this guy that has Curtis Wilkerson as his full name, and I cannot get away with it. I think I've tagged him a few times on stories he's written, also, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't get away with him. But if you want to follow the real Curtis Wilkerson, then follow him at Kurt Wilkerson underscore on Twitter. Uh, Curtis, I don't want to touch too much on basketball just because I mean most people are probably going to listen to this after four o'clock you know today and we've got basketball coming up here shortly but um just uh touch a little bit on on Maui what you're expecting to see over these three games 
I mean, it's just a huge opportunity, a great showcase event, you know, for this Arkansas team. I'm sitting here in, in real time watching this Texas Tech Creighton game. It's just high level basketball, man. I mean, you get eight really good teams in the field. This looks like a sweet 16 game. So mm -hmm. uh, really good for Arkansas. You know, they've been on on streaming the first three games of the year. So it's an opportunity for them to get on the national stage. Uh, you know, a lot of people around the country are, are high on the Razorbacks, but haven't got the opportunity to see them. And so this is a chance for them to really, you know, kind of step up and show what they're made of. Um, I'm anxious to see how much progress they've made since going down there and, and getting beat up on at Texas in that exhibition. They've looked good in these home games, but these are against mid-major teams that you should dominate. So, you know, is the defensive intensity that we've seen from the Razorbacks, is that going to carry over uh, against more talented, you know, bigger athletic teams? Uh, and then offensively, you know, Arkansas has been struggling in the turnover department. That's been a problem dating back to the preseason. Now you're going to start facing some teams that are going to heat you up and, and try to put some pressure on you. Are they going to go back on their heels like they did in Austin, or are they going to attack that pressure and, and find a little bit more efficiency on the offensive end? So uh, it's going to be really interesting to watch. I'm excited for it. Uh, you know, great resume building opportunities early in the year, uh, an opportunity for them to earn some respect, uh, you know, and, and kind of justify that high national ranking that they have. Uh, and it's feast week, man. I mean, this is the best outside of maybe that first uh, – little bit of the NCAA tournament there but if you're talking about regular season college basketball this is about as good as it gets right here so a uh, great opportunity for the Razorbacks I'm looking forward to it. Curtis has a sister show called Hog Hoops Live you can check that out it's the same Facebook page the same Apple podcast channel same podcast channel in general wherever you get your podcast uh, but it's a different YouTube channel you'll need to search for Hog Hoops Live you could probably search for Curtis Wilkerson and it also pro pop up but it's H-A-W-G hoops live on facebook or excuse me on youtube so go check him out there he also does uh you know stand up sometimes after some games as well uh curtis missouri coming up uh friday what are your what are you expecting to see out of this you think i mean it's gonna be hard for arkansas to replicate the energy level that they had against Ole miss playing for bowl eligibility kj jefferson factor in that one um you know just the way the game went last year against Ole miss senior day all that kind of stuff what are you expecting to see when they go to Columbia this year where they're, by the way, 0-5 all time? Yikes. Yeah, well, I, I hope we see a, you know, a Razorback team that's motivated to win and uh, just maybe kind of prove that they're they're just on a different level now than Missouri. You know, we always talk about uh, beating the 3Ms in, in the Mississippi schools in Missouri, and you know, Arkansas has got an opportunity here to get two out of three done. And, you know, the one that they lost was without K.J. Jefferson. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of liked what Sam Pittman said earlier in his press conference today about – uh, you know, there's a difference in seven and five and six and six when it comes to the type of bowl that you go to. Uh, it sounds like they're really amping it up as a rivalry game. I, you might have to sell me on that one with this whole battle line thing. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see Arkansas come out with an intense effort. And I, I think they will. I, I kind of got a feeling that uh, they released some demons, man. It looks like they were letting out some frustrations against Ole Miss. Uh, and I think they feel pretty good about where they're at. And, again, they're just a different team, in my opinion, uh, with a healthy K.J. Jefferson out there on the field. I, I think that's going to be the difference in this one. All right, Curtis. Appreciate you, brother. Yep, anytime. All right, everybody. That's Kurt Wilkerson, at Kurt Wilkerson underscore on Twitter. He's the Hog Sports Senior Analyst. Again, follow his other page on YouTube. It is uh, Hog Hoops Live, where he does a show very similar to this setup right here. All right, next up, Andrew Ellis, our newest guy who's been with us where – well, Andrew's been with us for a year and a half now, so uh, he's been with us been with us for a while. Does a great job. Does really outstanding work with Razorback baseball. Danny's kind of the recruiting guy. Andrew does really everything: football, basketball, baseball. But uh, really shines on a different level when it comes to baseball coverage, and uh, we're certainly happy to have him. You can follow him at Andrew Ellis twenty four seven on Twitter. Andrew, how you doing? Hasn't picked up. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing great, Trey. How are you? I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. Uh, first, I want to get your impressions, Andrew, on uh, on the game Saturday. What you What you think of Arkansas's 42-27 win? Well, you know, Trey, I made a decision about last week around this exact same time where I was like, you know, I'm just I'm done expecting Arkansas to put a complete game together. You know, mm -hmm. we've seen flashes all year that you know the offense when it's clicking looks great. The defense have been showing signs of light life lately. I just, I just found it hard to believe. I was like, you know, this game 11. Who, who waits till the 11th game of the year to put their best game together? And by golly, they did it. They just, they, they did it. And uh, man, it was, uh, it was really good to see from this Arkansas team. You know, just it's kind of almost makes you more disappointed with how some of the results have played out earlier in the year because mm -hmm. you see what this team is capable of doing. 
and something that I think that we all felt like they could do. It was just, it was just really the first time we've seen them really put it together. But man, it's good to see KJ Jefferson play so well against his home state team. You know, Pittman talked about how much he wanted to play well after missing last week. Really good to see from him. Awesome game for Rocket Sanders. Just a just an all around great win for Arkansas. And like I said, just something that we've kind of been waiting to see from them, but they finally put it together. By the way, everybody, you're going to want to follow Andrew at Andrew Ellis 24-7 on Twitter uh, just because of the transfer portal. He's going to have a big big role in breaking news and putting stuff out there about what's going on with the transfer portal. Again, it opens on December 5th. It's going to be a wild, wild month. Not only that, I mean, you got early signing day, you got bowl practices, a lot of stuff coming up. And I mentioned earlier, you're going to want to check the site out on Tuesday. Uh, just go there. I can't tell you what's happening yet, but you're going to want to check um, hogsports.com out on Tuesday. And, Andrew, the reason I, I bring up the portal stuff is Sam Pittman had a little bit of stuff today. What do you think about his comments uh, today on uh, on how they're going to how they're going to work with the portal? Well, I thought it was interesting that he was, you know, he, he basically said there's such a misconception where everyone, you know, views the portal so negatively. And I think that's kind of just, you know, how we viewed college sports for so long is, Mm -hmm. you know, you commit to your school, you play for your school, all that. And obviously it's changed a lot over the last few years. And I think so many people, it has such a negative connotation about it. And, you know, he's felt this way for a while. He's spoken about this before, but it was kind of interesting to see him say, like, you know, we don't view it as a bad thing. I mean, obviously Drew Sanders, we don't view him as a guy who was disgruntled at his school before or anything. And, you know, he talked about how they wanted to help some of their guys. You know, they have a lot of guys that they're going to have exit meetings with that, might possibly want to do something else in their career, and he wants to help those guys. I also thought it was interesting that he mentioned that James Joyner, that he didn't even talk to him, that he found out because Jimmy Smith showed him his tweet right before he did his press conference. And so I thought that was all pretty interesting stuff. But, yeah, it seems like this uh, this December 5th date, this upcoming, or I guess it's not this up next Monday, but the Monday after that, it seems like it's just going to be the wild, wild west, like you've said, in college football, where you just see so many names just enter the portal. They're just going to start flooding in and, We'll probably hear some more between now and then of guys who don't officially enter but say that they're going to enter. But, yeah, yeah, I bet two two weeks from now, I bet it's going to be just an absolutely hectic day. Yeah, I I just don't understand why you wouldn't just wait to the four-day dead period and have a conversation, you know, on your way out. Because there's no real benefit to to doing it now unless you just want to have an early vacation, I guess. Um, What do you think is going to happen on Saturday, Missouri? I mean – it's going to be hard to match the energy level that they came out with uh, against Ole Miss, and you would expect Missouri to have maybe a similar type. Now, I've been to Como before, obviously. Uh, I've never been, like, wowed by the crowd or anything like that, but I do know that they can get up for a game, you know, as far as players. They played Georgia very tough earlier this year, um, and I feel like they're an improving team overall. No, yeah, you're, you're definitely right. I mean, they're definitely an improvement from what they were last year, and I think that this is this is not going to be an easy game by any means because it's such an obvious letdown spot as well. You know, we've talked about that a little bit where you had the team that comes off of a big win and how do they respond to that? It's probably nice to catch them there. So you, know, you have a Missouri team that is fighting for their season. I mean, this, their season's on the line right here. You know, if they win this game, they can become bowl eligible. Senior day, you have all those things. You're five and six playing against a quote unquote rival, and you have an Arkansas team that just had their biggest game of the season. So how will Arkansas? respond to that you know we've seen this team kind of struggle with some motivation at times I think that you know this this Arkansas team is healthy they're in a good spot and I think that the win last or Saturday will give them confidence and so I don't expect Arkansas to come out and lay an egg in this one but I definitely think it's going to be probably a tougher game than most fans would like to admit Mm -hmm. you know I don't I think going on the road in the SEC regardless of where you're going and it's not like Missouri has this, you know, Baton Rouge type of atmosphere or anything. But like you said, it's hard to win on the road in the SEC no matter where you're going. And, you know, it's, you know, especially when you're playing a team that's motivated, which I expect Missouri to be this weekend. So, you know, this is a big week for Arkansas to kind of, like Pittman said today, earn that respect back. You know, there's, you know, you're six and six, you're going to go to a bowl game, you've salvaged the season, but dropping this game at Missouri would kind of be another iffy setback that you have to explain yeah. to your fan base and kind of have to say like, uh, you know, I know we're going to a bowl game, but you know, it is what it is. And there's a, there's a difference in bowl games and all that. But overall, I think this is just more of a program perception type of game for Arkansas, where you have to go out and prove that you've made the progress. And, you know, they had a great season last year and I think they've done a good job of stabilizing things. I think this, this win over Ole Miss was a big one for them that they really needed to, show proof in their progress for the program. But I think losing to Missouri would be another setback that 
I don't think they want to do, and I think the players will play motivated. Yeah, it always uh, it always surprises me how much people underestimate going on the road in the SEC. I mean, it's it's a tough thing to do. Um, I, I'll tell you something interesting that jumps out to me just looking at, at Missouri stats. They are seventh in the country in time of possession. Did you know that? Seventh. I did not in the know country. that. Wow. Well, what's weird about that is they're 85th in scoring offense and they're 89th in total offense. That just doesn't match up very much. I mean, I guess they're barely getting first downs, you know, just creeping the ball. Yeah. You use it. What are they, How many third downs do these guys have? They must have a lot of them. But uh, I just think that's a really, really interesting stat. Um, all right, Andrew, I always ask you, you got any words of wisdom at the end here? You got anything you want to uh, say? Well, I guess my words of wisdom, I guess, are just to point out that we got a big basketball game coming up in mm-hmm. about a little over an hour now. Uh, you know, Texas Tech and Creighton are currently playing as we speak. I, I, you know, I saw his tied at halftime. Yeah. That game, those, those two teams look really, really strong. I mean, you know, a lot of these teams, it's tough to find out how good everyone is because it's early in the year and what do the numbers next to their name mean or anything. But I think Arkansas is going to, you know, I think they should get by Louisville today. It'd be pretty disappointing if they didn't. But I think tomorrow's game is going to be a real you know, progress report for Arkansas. So we can kind of see how far they've come since that Texas exhibition because they're going to face some quality competition in this, uh, this these next few days. And it's going to be really fun to see this team respond. And, you know, we're all still waiting on the, the big Nick Smith Jr. thing. But I'm looking forward to it, and I think it should be fun. All right, Andrew. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. All right, everybody. That's Andrew Ellis. Again, you're going to want to follow this guy, Andrew Ellis 24-7 on Twitter. You're going to want to follow him because – uh, he'll have a lot of great uh, portal news for you. Well, we'll be pretty much all hands on deck when that happens. December 5th is going to be absolutely wild. I mean, it's going to be unlike anything we've ever seen, not just Arkansas, the whole landscape of college football. Can we get that guy? Can we get that guy? Ooh, this guy just entered the portal. What, so-and-so entered the portal for Arkansas? Why would he leave? You know, all kinds of stuff like that. It's going to be great conversation. I mean, I might as well – maybe I'll just do a live show <laughs> while it's going on. We can just do instant reaction or something. Maybe that's something to think about. All right, let's see what we got here. George R. Lasher says, Trey, what areas do you feel the Hogs will most likely add through the portal on December 5th? It just depends on who goes out. I mean, in the past it's always been, you know, uh, we got to fill this hole, this hole, this hole. We want to take – you know, Pittman used to say last year, like, we, need, we know we need this, we know we need this. But now, who knows? You could need something you didn't even think you needed before. So, it, it's pretty wide open. I mean, obviously, I think you always, you're always you going to look at defensive line and, you know, wide receiver probably be another area that's, that's maybe kind of obvious too, maybe linebacker. Steve Miller says, looking ahead, do you think the most likely destination is Hogs versus in the Texas Bowl? Possibly. Yeah, I think that's definitely possible. But you could also end up – I've seen Las Vegas. I've seen Music City. There's a lot of people talking about playing Illinois in a bowl game, you know, a Big Ten tie-in game. So that would be pretty cool, facing Brett Bielema again. I don't think a lot of people are like, I know Sam Pittman wants a piece of Brett Bielema, but Barry Lunny might want a piece of Arkansas too. (laughs) You know, he's offensive coordinator there. So let's see. Dalton Adams says that was the first game he ever went to. That's cool. Yeah, I went, I went to the hog walk, too. I don't go to a lot of hog walks just because I'm trying to get the press box, but I wanted to go check out the seniors and stuff, see them walk through for one last time. Lane Montgomery says, Trey, your thoughts on chances of K.J. Catalan, Landers, Hazelwood, and Knox return next year? Pittman actually said today he didn't want to steal any thunder on what Catalan's going to do, but he said they you know feel like they're in a good place with Catalan. Um I just don't know on all these guys. Landers, I don't, Landers can't come back. I mean, if all those guys came back, KJ, Catalan, Hazelwood, Knox, that would be pretty sweet. Of course, offensive lineman too, Luke Jones. That would be another nice guy to come back. Tyler Tober says, big sigh of relief, no in bowl eligible. I wouldn't mind going to Nashville. I mean, I'd love to go to somewhere where it's warm, obviously, but Nashville's – I've been to worse places, <laughs> for sure. Landon Montgomery says, Sanders and Poole leaving the linebacker group in good hands. Poole Paul is the truth. Yeah, I think we could probably – it feels like Sanders probably has done enough to maybe even be drafted in the first round. And Poole Paul's playing really well. They need more bodies at linebacker. They really like Jordan Crook. Manny Powell, I think, is another guy 
keep an eye on. Bill Rich says prediction Hogs win for the first time. Missouri 35 21, go Hogs. Chris Mink says Ole Miss got the helmet back. That's good. I'm glad they got it back. I mean, I'm all for that kind of stuff, you know, like, you know, fans going at each other stuff. But the players on the field, yeah, can't take somebody's helmet. Paul Mitchell says, last game at Ole Miss, question mark. I was just saying um, Lane Kiffin. I mean, the talk is he could be number one for Auburn. So, let's see. I lost my spot. Chris Corley doesn't like Larry, the bowling ball. I mean, you've got to celebrate the victories. I mean, you just hope it's earlier in the year than week 11. Reggie Allen says, Trey, I thought it was hilarious how you went off on the idiots before cutting the show off short last week. I got frustrated last week, absolutely. I mean – and I was just like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Somebody called me on my walk and talk reply. He called me a, a Sam Pittman fanboy. He didn't like the way that Arkansas won. I mean, my idea of, of some, how some of these people are, you know, and I know I don't I don't want to go into it, but man, there's some interesting people out there. Ricky Townsend says, I like the Liberty Bowl since I live in Jonesboro. I would prefer not to go to the Liberty Bowl. My memories of the Liberty Bowl, I have two memories of the Liberty Bowl. Um, The year that uh, 2008, I think, 2009, 2009 Liberty Bowl, uh, it was 14 degrees, and I think it was the coldest I've ever been in my life, like sustained freezing. Uh, Tusk died after that game of natural causes. I'm not so sure he didn't freeze to death. But uh, that, I had that memory. And then the 2016, 2015 Liberty Bowl, 2016, 14. Maybe, no, 14 was Texas. But the one they went to with Bielma, they had the Crone helmets. And I remember they had that like 747 or whatever, that big freight airplane, FedEx freight plane. And I remember it did a turn in midair, and it was just the slowest flyby that you've ever seen. And I thought it was just like going to start dipping out, fall out of the sky. It went so slow, just this huge swooping turn right over the stadium. Those are the things that jump out to me about the Liberty Bowl. But um, I would prefer – my preference would probably be to um, – I would probably take Nashville or Houston. I mean, Houston's going to be warmer. Maybe Houston. Maybe Texas Bowl. We'll see. They got to beat Missouri, and maybe they'll have some options. So we'll see how it goes. All right, everybody. I want to thank uh, Andrew Ellis, Curtis Wilkerson, Danny West for joining us. I want to thank all of you for hopping on and checking out the show. Again, Tuesday, go check out the site at Hog Sports Tuesday. It's not even a special offer or anything. Just go check out the site. You'll be glad you did. All right. This is the last show this week because we got basketball coming up, and then we've got. Uh, Thanksgiving on Thursday when I normally do the show, and then Friday football game. So kind of truncated week. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. This has been Trey Vitti with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.